Are you ready? Stand by. Hundreds of thousands of Canadians are involved in shooting sports. We traveled the country to bring you the events and the people that make this incredible community unlike any other. Welcome to the CCFR's Canada Downrange. We're at the Ontario Provincial Trap Shooting Championships. This is our 100th anniversary of trap shooting in Ontario. Hi, I'm Neville Henderson. I'm the president of the Ontario Provincial Trap Shooting Association. So the first day, we'll probably shoot uh, 116 yard targets, 100 handicap targets, and, and 100 doubles. And probably the, that, that will be the preliminary day, that's sort of the warm up. The next day is the start of the, the, the championship, and that'll be uh, 300 targets, singles, uh, handicap, and doubles. Then, usually on the Saturday, it's 200 singles, and that's the, one of the main events. And then on the Sunday, it's the championship for handicap and for doubles. It's a great sport. I've been doing it for over 35 years. I just love, I love shooting. I find, uh, you know, it, it keeps me focused. Uh, I find it relaxing, especially practice. I find it just enjoyable. Um, uh, it's just, just something different, you know. You get a reasonable amount of exercise. Uh, you don't have to be in great physical shape to do it. Uh, you do have to have good concentration and pretty good vision. Uh, but there are a lot of distaff shooters, people that are in wheelchairs. They're excellent shots. There are a lot of nice people involved in it. They're all very friendly. I've never came, come across anyone really that I, I found I disliked. So they support one another. Uh, just a great bunch to shoot with and, and uh, just enjoy the camaraderie. The Torah Provincial Trap Shooting Association would have close to th over 300 uh, members. And they're all ages. We've got a lot of uh, junior shooters. Uh, some of them as long as young as 12 years old, 13 years old, and they're quite, uh, quite good at shooting at targets. Uh, and then it goes right through the ranks, right up till 80, 85 years old. We've got uh, one shooter who's in his 90s. Uh, a lot of female shooters, and it seems to be growing with, with the ladies, so we're getting more of them out shooting. I'm Lisa Bennett, and I'm from Port Coburn, Ontario. We're here at the Hamilton Gun Club for the Ontario Provincials, and this is the American Trap Sport. Never really shot much before. My boyfriend got me into hunting, shooting a little bit, and then my cousin actually brought me to an official trap place in Dunville, and I just fell in love with it ever since. To prepare myself for a match like this, I just typically make sure I'm organized the night before, have everything ready to go. When I get here, check where I'm supposed to be, make sure my timing's all right. I'm more of a no practice kind of person because I always feel like I do good in the practice runs and I always wish those were my targets. Uh, so I just kind of go out there, try to drain everything else out and just take each target as they go. So every time I'm nervous, I feel like I do a little bit better. Once you kind of get over the nerves, I almost feel like it's too relaxed and you kind of get not necessarily too involved, but it's almost like you don't enjoy it as much. The nervous always kind of gets you a little pumped and amped, so. Uh, it makes you feel a little bit good, like a little bit like, ooh, you just got beat by a girl kind of thing, so. <laughs> gives it a little push to them to get a little better, so. I know a lot of people get intimidated by firearms, yeah. but as soon as you make that first shot and realize how fun the game is, I think you can get involved and don't ever be discouraged because there's so many males. You're always gonna have that drama between, you know, oh, it's a man's sport, whatnot, but there's a lot of ladies coming up in it and everyone has fun. Quite a number of trophies are given out of this event. We'd have over a couple of hundred trophies that would be awarded. We do it by category, so we're trying to encourage younger and older shooters and, and females to shoot. We, we have trophies for all of the various classes so that they're competing one against one another, so that they're not always competing against the absolute top shooters who they don't have a prayer of beating. You know, so it gives everyone an opportunity, they get a trophy, they feel good about it, they come back again, and, and eventually they get to be top shooters themselves. Frank Ponyudo is my name. This is Lorenzo Ponyudo, my son, and my son Vincent. Family tradition, I started registering at 10, and I'm 47 now, so that makes it 37 years of registering. My father was a longtime shooter as well, and uh, my uncle, my grandfather was, my cousin. So there's, uh, there's a few of us in the family that, uh, that are here. And of course, I passed on the tradition to the boys. We see it as a weekend to come out, and we try to live up to his expectations and everyone else's expectations because we're Frank Bonito's son, right? <laughs> so, it's a sport you can't... You're not too old to shoot. Never outgrow it. Never outgrow it. You'll always have it. Everybody, uh, Bert's a, a veterinarian. I'm an actuary by profession. I, I work for uh, uh, the Office of Superintendent of Financial Institutions. Um, Jace, uh, got guys that have construction firms. Um, we do have doctors and lawyers, there are a number of those, dentists, 
So it, it's a very broad cross section. We've got teachers, some of them teach university level. Uh, so they're just people that are interested in shooting and, and enjoy the pastime. Well, my name is Emily Brown, and I sit on the boards of the Ontario Provincial Trap Shooting Association, the Canadian Trap Shooting Association, also the Ontario Council of Shooters. She actually is very uh, eager on growing the sport, so she spends a lot of time trying to attract and, and find ways of getting new shooters into the sport. So I'm here today because we're celebrating our 100th anniversary provincial championship here in Ontario. And I have a long history of, of clay target shooting. Started when I was 12 or 13 years old. And for me as a historian of the sport, I'm very excited about this weekend's event. My first introduction to trap shooting was in Brampton. My father and mother were groundskeepers of the Peel Trap Club. In 1978, I graduated high school and there were um, four or five Olympic and nationally ranked athletes in our school. And the centerfold for our high school yearbook were those individuals with me looking down the barrel of a BT-99. Um, I, I wonder if that would happen now. I think being involved in the shooting sports uh, for so many years, 46 some years, I feel it has really shaped who I am and the significance of the sport to me just can't be underestimated. What it taught me as an individual, the skills it gave me uh, professionally and personally. So I'm really not willing to give that up because uh, you know we have criminal activity with firearms. We are responsible. We've had 207 shooters registered. Uh, yesterday for the big singles championship. I've invited uh, local Liberal MPs to come out and please try it, see what we do. And if it's not for you, at least understand that people here enjoy it and they enjoy it responsibly. So I can guarantee there are no injuries at a shooting range and um, I just want to get that word out. The CCFR's Canada Downrange is brought to you by The Shooting Edge, SFRC, Select Shooting Supplies, the Calgary Shooting Center, Target Sports Canada, and Canuck and Bagheera. Yeah, it's not a shootout, uh, it's a shoot off and, and uh... Uh, usually it happens when, when there's a tie. You've got two people that are tied for the same category or, or, or the top score. Um, and then they will shoot against one another and there's a protocol for doing that. And they go so many targets and, and uh, the first one that misses is out. If they don't miss, we repeat for the same number of targets until someone misses. So it can go on for quite a while. In, in some of the big shoots in the States, there could, uh, the 200 bird race would take whatever it takes, but uh, they will shoot for four or 500 more targets. Being part of a shoot off is, is quite intense. Uh, you know it's coming, you know the other shooters shot as well as you have, you know that he's on and he, he's really able to focus on targets. So you've got to do the same and you've got to force all, everything around you out of your mind. The mind has to be perfectly focused on that target. Nothing can get into before you put the gun up and until you fire. When you get into a shoot off, there are people watching and that gets into your head and you've got to push all of that stuff out before you actually take the target. Really felt comfortable in the zone. I dropped one target for 24 out of 25 and I prevailed over a very tough competitor. There's always an intimidation about guns. People hear guns and they don't know enough about it and they get intimidated and afraid. So when I first started my boys, no different than when I started in the sport, uh, the first couple years I spent with them, the first, I didn't even care how many targets they broke. The important thing for me was for them to learn all the, the safeties, uh, and the different things about making sure that guns are always forward, always open. It's, it's all about education. I've been uh, competing for 37 years. I've been around the sport even longer. When my father brought, pushed me around in a, uh, in a baby stroller around here, and I've never seen an accident once, not one. We have people who you know, shoot from 10 to 80 something. Uh, we've got husbands and wives and grandpas and everyone. It's a shooting sport, it's, it's for everyone. When you look at those 21st century skills that we're supposed to be teaching our young people, right? We've got critical thinking, problem solving, patience, resilience, you know? Uh, you don't win every day. Sometimes you lose and you gotta get back up and, and be ready to try again the next day. So these are all skills you learn on the range. I think taking and, and putting undue limitations on, on law-abiding citizens is, is just a, a cover-up. It doesn't, it's not really going to achieve anything. The main thing in this whole sport is just managing that barrel and making sure that it doesn't point at anything you don't want to hit.
We enjoyed a fantastic day on the range with 72 new female shooters at the first annual Ladies Range Day. This has been a great event for women of all ages to come out. We've had mother and daughter teams. We've got co-workers that booked and came in together. The girls have all come out. They've shot handguns, archery, shotguns, rifles, and had a complete blast. My name is Linda. I have a passion for wanting to see ladies more and more involved. So I went up to our board of directors and just asked if it would be okay to have a ladies day. They were totally on board, partnered with the CCFR, and things were 100% go. As well, we had a group of co-workers that were completely hilarious. They had matching tie-dye shirts, like a little team, and they were hooting and hollering all day long. They had so much fun. Well, our team captain, Carrie, found, us, uh, found the website on Facebook and texted us all and said, hey, you interested in doing a ladies' day at the gun club? And we said, sure, why not? Never shot a gun in our lives, so might as well come out and see what it's all about. It just reiterates the safety and the knowledge and the power that is there that can be had and how to do it safely and respectfully. We've enjoyed the instruction. Everyone's been fantastic. And again, I've already asked to come back. So it took a huge team of people here today to make this possible. The girls were divided into squads and they had captains that took them around to each stage. It's a pump shotgun. Ammunition goes in there to load it in the chamber. Slide that forward. Bring her up like so, get her ready to go. Point that bead. This is the bead right here. Just look at it, pull the trigger. Both eyes open. Uh, all of the ladies I worked with today one-on-one -on -one, were all first-time shooters of handguns. A lot of them were a little apprehensive going in. We build them up, so we start with a smaller uh, caliber 22, move to a 9 mil, move to a 357 revolver, and uh, all of them, th that, that anticipation would build, and uh, the excitement would build, and really the comfort level would build. The smiles would just progress from, oh my gosh, to wow, that was so much fun, can I shoot some more? My name is Doug Lightheart. I'm the president of East Elgin Sportsman's Association. Up until recently, it's been a male-dominated sport. For the most part, East Elgin, we also hold a monthly range day, and we do invite a lot of women out. We have noticed we've ran 18 of them so far, and we've noticed an increase in women coming out to the point of almost 50% now. Out of 60 people that we bring in monthly, at least 50% will be women. Since we started doing range days and events like this, we've had, we're averaging four new members at this club per event. Um, th they love it. We've had people start with the 22, be nervous, end up the day with a 44 Magnum or 4570, and they absolutely pursue it. We've had teenage girls come in and go round after round of a 44 Magnum and absolutely pursue the sport with a passion. <laughs> there was a mother-daughter team here today and it was actually the mom's idea to get her daughter to come out, give it a try, try out the shooting sports, what have you got to lose? I'm Angela Fitzgeorge, I'm from London and this is my daughter Kyla. So neither of us have ever shot guns before so this is on my bucket list for things to do and I'm just looking for something exciting and different to entice my girls. I have another daughter as well who couldn't make it, but to entice them to want to come out with me. So this seemed like a really good opportunity for bonding time. So they went around to the four different stages. At every stage, we also had a team of volunteers that were instructing the girls, making sure the firearms were safe, loading the firearms for the women, and just following it right through the entire experience. Just about here, you're gonna pull back another quarter inch, it'll snap forward. On its, own, on its own, exactly. At that point, you've loaded around into the chamber. As well, we put on a full meal for these girls at lunch. It was crazy. There was a team of guys in there cooking for these ladies. The food was incredible. The help has been great. They were out here at 4.30 this morning, making sure that all the targets were up, that the grounds looked beautiful, and everything was ready for the girls. So volunteers and the gun owning community in general are just salt of the earth people and thanks to them for helping make this possible. And this is what it's about. The idea is to get girls out, to let them come out, feel empowered and try it. One girl was so excited and she said she was hooked. Absolutely wanted to take her pal, wanted to become a licensed gun owner. It gives them some empowerment to say, hey, I've done this and I know how it feels and I respect people that whether, whether they want to continue on and get their firearms license and buy our firearms, regardless, they've 
created a respect and a perspective that they never had before. It's amazing once you get out here and actually do it, it's a whole different ball game than seeing it on a television or hearing about it. It's different doing it yourself because I've never shot a gun. So to go from a handgun to a rifle to a shotgun, absolutely amazing. We saw a lot of young girls here today, which to me is really inspiring because, you know, I don't want it to be a sport that dies off for things like video games or going to the mall or, you know, things that are traditionally, um, you know, appealing to young people. So it's great to see the, the young girls come out, uh, some of them with their moms, some of them with their friends, just coming out and giving it a try. We'll probably be having a new hobby um, and spending more time out here. Uh, if my daughter has her way, we'll be out here on Friday nights so that she can join the youth organizations out here. The next generation is the future of our sport. So it's really important for these girls to get that opportunity. And not all of them have parents who are gun owners. <laughs> all right, aim for the bumps on his neck. Okay. Got him. You did get him in the beak. <laughs> I thought so. Josie, <laughs> well done. We had a big lunch together in the dining hall and some raffles, and it's just been a fantastic event. As well, we raised some money for charity, so all in all, I think it's been a great success. Just come out and try. Just give it a go. It, it was so exciting just to try it, and being a first-timer, I loved every bit of it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of us have had misconceptions, and they've been totally straightened out. You know, at the end of the day, we are in politically unfriendly times, and I feel like having events like this gets everyday average people who otherwise wouldn't have this opportunity, it gives them a chance to come out and see what it's about. Firearms does not equal violence. Firearms are used in a legitimate sport. It's an Olympic sport. So to give them the opportunity to come out and say, try it in a safe, welcoming environment under proper supervision, you know, being taught the, taught the proper techniques, you know, th to me this is very important. The idea is to get girls out, to let them come out, feel empowered and try it. It really isn't a boys sport anymore. The women are the fastest growing demographic in the shooting sports. The CCFR's Canada Downrange is brought to you by The Shooting Edge, SFRC, Select Shooting Supplies, the Calgary Shooting Centre, Target Sports Canada, and Canuck and Bagheera. Hey guys, it's Rod with your pro tip today. Um, we're going to answer a long-standing question. Um, it's a simple question, but the answer can be actually a little bit more complex than we think, which is, how often do I clean my guns? And in the Canadian Firearm Safety course, I get asked that question well, every class, so that's <laughs> a valid one. So the complex answer is we need to look at the look at the uh, a little bit of background here. So there's two types of cleaning when it comes to firearms. There's something called a field strip, or there's something called a detailed strip. So a field strip is basically we're, I'll demonstrate on this. I've got a, a semi-automatic handgun. A field strip basically is make sure this thing's not loaded, which of course it wouldn't be here, but always double check a field strip is when I take the major components, so in the case of a semi-automatic uh, handgun, it's usually four parts, right? You've got the grip and the frame here, you've got the recoil spring, the barrel, and the slide. So basically, the field strip is I take those components apart, I clean the slide, I clean the barrel, and I clean the grip in the frame, just kind of brush around in there a little bit, wipe it out with the patch, and reassemble it and function test it, and that is a field strip. Or there's a detail strip. Now, the detail strip is when I disassemble the slide completely, I pull the firing pin, I get the springs out of there, I pull the extractor, everything, polish all of those parts, you know, when it comes to the grip and the frame, everything. Um, I polish all those parts and then reassemble the whole gun as if it were brand new. I put it all back together, I function test it, and that's called a detail strip. So when it comes to cleaning guns, we'll get back to that, is there's, it depends on the gun, it depends on what you use it for, and it also depends on how many rounds you're putting through it. So if we talk about like how many trips to the range, well, I don't know, do you shoot a thousand rounds when you go to the range or do you shoot, uh, you know, 150 rounds or 60 rounds when you go to the range? So basically it's how, how much ammunition are you putting, in, putting through this thing? It also depends on the gun because some firearms will be malfunctioning right off the hop, you know, the minute that you put 200 rounds through it. Some firearms like, you know, I'm not getting anything from Glock for this, 
that's got to change. Got to get on some kind of um, uh, referral program. But Glock, I just, I mean, this is my favorite handgun. It just runs and runs and runs and it'll run dirty, it'll run underwater, it runs all that, all the time, it runs like that. And that's one of the reasons why I own them. Other firearms, um, at the minute they get a little bit dirty, that's it, they won't function, they'll start to malfunction. Uh, typically, manually operated firearms, like a pump action shotgun or a lever action uh, or a bolt action, they can run a little dirtier because you're the one that's actually cycling the action. And if you have to put your back into it a little bit, you can do that. Semi-autos, a little bit different they're always relying on just the gas, whether it's a direct blowback or they're actually cycling gas through the action to, 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 uh, to cycle the thing. So semi-autos, you probably have to clean them a little bit more often. Manually operated, maybe not so often. And also, it depends what you have the gun for. So I have guns that are just toys that I would take to the range, shoot or whatever. Yeah, you know what, I probably wouldn't clean them until they started to malfunction, and that's okay. I have other guns that I need to be able to bet my life that they will fire when I pull the trigger. So let's say it's a semi-automatic shotgun that I'm using for predator defense when I'm out in the bush someplace. Yeah, I probably wanna make sure that, uh, that that thing functions and that I've cleaned it every time. So if I had a gun and I really needed that thing to, to shoot no matter what, personally, and it may seem extreme to some people, I would probably detail strip it every time that I took it out shooting and shot you know, a few, quite a few rounds, like detail strip. So detail stripping, let's say a, a Glock like this, the first time I did it, it took about an hour and a half because I was watching step by step through a, a YouTube video, which is a great tool for gun owners. Um, now I can detail strip uh, one of these things probably 10 or 15 minutes and it's reassembled and it's like a brand new gun every single time. So practice makes perfect when it comes to cleaning guns. It won't be so much of a chore when you get, get used to it. And again, it depends on the gun, depends how much you're using it, and it depends primarily what you're using it for. So hopefully that helps. That's your pro tip for today. We'll see you soon. Remember, if you don't stand up for your own ability to own and use firearms, who will? Join the CCFR or donate right now at www.firearmrights.ca.